did not deserve what happened to him. There's no respect for the humanity and the dignity of black life. And pulling his gun. Today in the corner confirmed he was shot twice in the back. Died at a hospital. Everyone was getting on the ground with black Mexican guys. No indictment from this man. The sight of black bodies inspires a different response than that of white bodies in this country. And as such, I'm saying that's a fundamental problem that we all have to deal with. Officer Turner, do you know why we brought you in for questioning today? Yes, sir. Good. Because we have a dilemma on our hands. We need further clarification about the actions that took place on the night of June 5th, 2015. Now, do not be nervous, but in your own words, tell us what transpired on the night in question. Um, well, I, I just, um, you, you just, um, what officer Turner? I just was doing my job. I was just trying to do my job. So when a young man meets a beautiful, attractive, woman, like your mother, of course, <laughs> they start to have desires, emotions, deep desires. Mom, Ooh. mom, dad already. No, it is not polite to interrupt. Now, where was it? Right. When a young man meets a beautiful, talented Christian, woman of God, a woman of virtue, a woman of faith, a woman of- Mom, mom. Fine, fine, fine. When they meet, they start to have urges. And you know what you should do when you start to feel these urges? And what is that, mom? Call mama or run or just don't do it, baby. You know, just wait, please, because there are <laughs> diseases, too many diseases out there. Oh, and I am too young to be a mama, a grandmama. Okay, you hear me, so baby? Mama, mama, calm down. Mama, it's <laughs> all right. I'm calm, I'm calm. Unless the reason you're telling me to calm down is because you've already had that moment of urges. Oh, Lord, have you, baby? Just tell me and I'll try to be okay. <laughs> Mom, calm down. I am still a virgin. I oh, promise. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, are you sure? You promise. Mama, yes, I'm sure. I promise. <laughs> baby, I am so relieved to hear that, baby. Oh. But you know, if you would have, I, I would have been totally fine with it. You know, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but mama, I do have one question. Okay, what is it, baby? How do you know if a girl likes you? Oh, you just know. It's all in their body language. How do they respond to you? Does their face light up whenever you enter a room? Does a smile come across their face whenever you're around? Do they make time for you? You'll see the signs. All you have to do is pay attention. Yeah, all right, just pay attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Baby, just remember how valuable you are. Anybody would be blessed to have you. Oh, mama, thank you, mama. <laughs> Ugh, I can't believe how big you've gotten. You're a man now. Yeah. Going to the prom, then you graduate. Ugh, I'm just at a loss for words. Oh, mama, don't cry now. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Good. You just made me really happy. I love you, mama. I like you too, Jojo. <laughs> <laughs>
So you say you were doing your job. Can you explain that in more detail? Some people hate their jobs. They wake up every morning and truly hate coming to work. But that wasn't me. I love my job. I love being a police officer. I always wanted to be a part of the police force. Ever since I saw In the Heat of the Night. I love that movie. My favorite character was Virgil Tibbs. I loved that guy because he was so brave and didn't take no mouth from anybody. Virgil Tibbs stood for something. He, he stood for justice, pride, and integrity. Everything that an officer should be, everything I tried to be. My favorite part of the heat of the night was seeing Virgil stand up to that racist police officer and say, they call me Mr. Tibbs. I knew I wanted to stand up for what was right. I wanted to be that brave soul that fought against injustice, just like Virgil Tibbs. Hey son, <laughs> do you need some help with that? No, I think I got it. Son, look, um, there's something I need to talk to you about. Okay, Dad. Look, I know tonight is a very special night. It's your senior prom, and uh, I just want to make certain you prepare. Prepared? Prepare for what, Dad? You know, I just want to, uh, you know, make certain you got everything that you need. Yeah. Oh, oh. Dad, no need to worry. I already picked up my corsage for my date this morning. I'm good. No. No, Joseph, not that. I want to make sure that you're prepared about the moment. The moment? What moment? You know the the moment. You know what I mean? The moment. Uh, oh, oh, that moment. Uh, hey, Dad. Um, I'm already prepared for that moment. Thanks anyway. Look, son. Look, I just want to make sure you're prepared. You know, you young people, you got all of these these desires and, you know, these urges, it's like everything's all pent up inside, you know. Okay, dad, dad, please. You don't have to, all right? I think I got it. Look, that first time, it can be a nervous time. I mean, it's awkward, it's scary, you know. I remember when me and your mother won the first time, but now, you know, you know. Oh, this God, dad, dad, no, please, oh, please. Don't go any further. I, I don't want that mental picture, all right? Please, I get it. I think I'm okay. I got it. Okay. Okay, son. Look, look, I just, look, I just want to make certain that, that, I, that I talk to you about those things, you know? Um, you're becoming a young man. And I am, look, I am proud of you. Really? Really? Yes. I mean, look, just look at you. You're going to the prom tonight. And then two weeks after, you are graduating. And then college. College. I mean, look, that has always been me a mother's dream for you. You are going to college. Yeah. I know, Dad. I know. Well, I mean, I mean, how do you feel being so, you know, close to graduation and getting ready to leave home? And I mean, you know, it's a Dad. Honestly, 
I am scared. Scared? Why is that? I don't want to fail, Dad. Do you know I'm one of the only people in my friend group that's going to college? I mean, one of my homeboys even said it was a waste of time, and I don't believe him, but I... I don't think I'm good enough. And you and mom, you all put so much faith into me and I don't wanna let you guys down. Son, look, you don't ever have to worry about failing because failure, it's a part of life. I mean, so what? You may fall, but that's not the end of the world. You just get back up and go even harder. And look, Joseph, you will never know what success feels like if you haven't experienced failure. And no matter what, I will always be proud of you. Me and mom will always be proud of you. Dad, you mean that? that you would still be proud of me, even if I failed. Joseph, always remember, no matter what, I will always be there and I will always be proud of you, always. Okay? Dad, thanks. Yeah, thank you. That means a lot. Are welcome to graduate. No, oh, Dad, can I read you something? Sure. All right, cool. Okay. To my hero. Thank you for all the time that you sacrificed in order for me to be great. Thank you for your patience your integrity and your strength. Thank you for always sitting on my sidelines at all of my games. Thank you for coaching me, for guiding me and letting me make my own mistakes. Thank you for being my biggest cheerleader, you know, my number one fan and the tallest person always standing up in that crowd. Thank you for praying for me and showing me how to be great and being present. I know you didn't have a father, but you broke that curse. You stayed and you stepped up to the challenge. And I know it wasn't easy, Dad, but you never let us see you sweat. You were my example, my role model, and my hero. I mean, that's it. I was going to give it to you at graduation, but I had to work out some of the kinks and you know how that goes. Joseph, I to... Joseph, I love you. And I am proud of you. Awesome. Thanks, Dad. Officer Turner, um, do you need some water or to take a break? No. I'm, I'm fine, sir. I can continue. On the night in question, I was responding to a noise disturbance in a small community outside of the city. The neighbors said that some kids were causing a disturbance and making a lot of noise. I knew it was prom night, so I knew that there were a few younger kids out, so I responded to the call. When I got there, it was a group of about six young black teens, three young girls, three males. They were still dressed in their prom attire. They looked so nice. As the neighbor stated, they were very loud and obnoxious. So I drove by in my car to see if I could get them to calm down. Okay. Then what happened, Officer Turner? I politely asked them to quiet down. I knew they were just having fun, 
and excited about prom night, but they were way too loud. Okay, so after you asked them to quiet down, what did the teenagers do? They didn't listen. They proceeded to talk loudly and yell. They even started yelling at me, which was causing even more of a disturbance. All of them seemed to be a little hostile. All except one. He was very quiet. Just kind of listened to what was going on. You could tell he was a good kid. But the rest were out of control. And I knew then that they had been drinking alcohol. So I decided to get out of my car to further investigate the situation. Did you call for backup? No, I didn't at first because I wasn't alarmed. I just really thought that these were some drunk kids. I knew I should have, but I just wanted to defuse the situation as quickly as possible. Okay, then what happened? I got out of my car and walked over and I, Okay, baby, give us a call as soon as you get there, all right? Be safe, and if you need any extra money, just give us a call. And remember, you don't have a curfew, but don't act stupid because you don't want mama to. Fun with your mama means to be safe and have fun. Bye. Okay, all right, I love you guys. See you later, all right? <laughs> Bye. Joe, our baby is going to the prom, my lord. Sweepy, I know. I mean, it's crazy. The boy's all grown up. Um, it seems like yesterday, what? We were changing his diapers, chasing behind him, cleaning his bottles in the supermarket. And now the boy's grown up, going to the prom tonight, just a week away from graduation day. I know, but you know, when I look at him, I still see my little boy, mama's baby. We be, the boy is almost a grown man. So, he'll always be my baby. Even when he is 60? You gonna look at him and say, mama's baby? Yes, I'm gonna grab that old wrinkly face and say, mama's baby. <laughs> Sweepy, look, I just wanna let you know, you have done an extraordinary job with that boy. Now look, Lord knows it's been hard, but baby, through it all, you've been an outstanding mother to him. Aw, honey, I appreciate that. I just wanted to raise him to be an amazing man, just like his father. His father is pretty fly. <laughs> All right now. You said it, not me. <laughs> what time is it? I told Joseph to call us as soon as he got there. I hope he made it there on time. You think I need to give him a call? Sweepy. Please, just relax, the boy's fine. I mean, look, he's probably having so much fun and forgot to call. The last thing on his mind is to check with his mom. I know I wasn't thinking about that on my prom night. Really? Well, what were you thinking about? Uh, you know, some stuff. What kind of stuff? Just some stuff, you know, stuff. Mm-hmm. And this stuff is? Um, stuff like knitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, look, it doesn't matter, baby, because you stay, and now it's been 20 years. 20 years and forever to go. That's right, sweet pea. You know that stuff I was thinking about on prom night? Uh-huh. I'm thinking about some of those things right now. Hmm, really? Really? Well, I got some yarn in the other room. Let me go get that for you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Officer Turner, please explain what happened next. I know I should have stayed in my car but these kids were not listening. So I had to assert some authority into the situation. So I got out 
and walked over. I asked them nicely to please quiet down or leave the premises. They didn't listen. Instead, they got louder and began cursing at me. No respect at all. So with a firm voice, I told them they would have to leave the premises because of their noise. They still didn't want to listen and even got louder, yelling at obscenities. I then realized the situation was beginning to escalate and that I might need some backup. So I radioed in for some backup. But as soon as I did that, one of the boys picked up a beer bottle and motioned as if he was going to throw it at me. Can you believe that? Not only were the yelling obscenities and being loud, one of them was going to throw a bottle at me. How dare he pick up a beer bottle to try to throw at me? I am the law. The law. Don't these kids have respect for the law anymore? Are we just some jokes? Something to be played with? We work hard every day to protect them. Keep them safe. Keep their communities safe. He picks up a bottle to throw at me. Those kids were disrespecting the badge. Everything I held with such esteem, they spat on and mocked. Officer Turner, what did you I do? I had to get respect back. I had to regain respect for the badge. Officer Turner, what did you do? In a panic, I, I, I pulled my gun and pointed it at I pulled my gun out. So let me get this straight. You pulled your gun out on six unarmed teenagers? Sir, he had a bottle in his hand and they were looking at me like I was a joke. They didn't respect me. They didn't respect the law. I go into their communities every day and it's the same story, lack of respect towards the police. It's like we've become the enemy, but as soon as trouble strikes, they call us and we still have to protect them. We still have to keep them safe and they sit there and disrespect us every day. It's unfair, sir, and I had enough. So I pulled my gun to get some respect back to make them listen. And did they? Most of them were terrified, but the one with the bottle stood there with a grimace, smirk, look me dead in the eye. His friend yelled for him to put the bottle down, but he wouldn't listen. He just stood there, bottle firm in his hand, ready to throw. It was like we were in an old Western and, and both of us ready to draw. And in that moment, my mind was flooded. I couldn't think straight and my heart was pounding and I was, terrified, but I knew that I had to stand my ground, reclaim respect for the badge, respect for the law. There are 43 million plus black Americans. 123 were killed by police gunfire. The, the worst department happened. is now responding to a wrong Today, the coroner confirmed he was shot. He was then shot and killed by a police officer. The medical examiner calling his death a homicide. Was shot and killed by a police officer. Part of a pattern, or do you think that this was a tragic mistake and the police department is correct in this response? Knowing no amount of sitting and waiting will bring the 17 year old back. I'll say the teen was not a threat to police and shouldn't have been was shot. two months away from graduating high school and planned to study medicine in college. We're an Officer fired, killing him. Sweeping. Are you okay? Beverly. Sweetheart. Beverly. 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 Are you okay? Joey's gone. He's gone. And I can't do anything to bring him back. I know 
baby, but look, <laughs> don't get through it, okay? Oh, Joe, I can't get through this. I don't even understand this. Our son is dead, Joe. Dead. I feel so helpless. Sleepy. <sighs> I remember when Joseph was six months old. He had gotten sick. We took him to the hospital because we couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. The doctor finally said it was a pneumonia and we just had to let it run its course. I remember I just held him in my arms. I put him close to my face. I wanted him to be close to me. All I could hear was his heavy breathing. And in that moment, I knew there was nothing I could do. Just hearing my baby struggle to breathe. Wait now. <laughs> we'll never see him walk across that stage to get his diploma. See him off to college. Meet his wife. Hold our first grandbaby. They took him from me. And he wasn't a thug or a criminal. He was my son. My son. And that officer, he didn't even think twice. As you just shot. Just shot. And our lives would change. No questions asked. They took my baby from me. And Joe, I am angry. <laughs> baby, I know you are angry. I mean, I'm angry too. But look, we just gotta believe. We gotta believe that justice is, is, is gonna be served for the death of our son. <laughs> and we gonna, we gonna get through this. I promise. I just wanted him to make it home. Just make it home after the prom. And he never did. He never did. Joe, I felt like I can't breathe. <laughs> in our lives and sometimes it's hard to tell the night and day still that hope that lies within this room I share as I keep my eyes upon the I'll know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has But if, if the storms don't cease 
And just in case the winds keep on blowing in our life, our soul, anchor, anchor, anchor. In the Lord, baby, I want you to go somewhere with me. Where, Joe? The church. Church. Yes, baby. They say the church is the place where at least hope is supposed to be. And Lord knows we need some hope, Sweepy. Sweepy, I mean, what, what else better do you got to do tonight, huh? What else you got to do? What do we got to do? Come on, what you say? Okay. Let's Amy, go. We're going to get through this. Okay? We're going to get through this. You know why? Why? Because I still got you. I still got you. So after you pulled your gun out on six unarmed teenagers, one teen having a bottle in his hand, what happened next? It was quiet for a moment. The other teens yelled to their friend to put down the bottle. He wouldn't listen. He stood there, stubborn, bottle in hand. His friends kept pleading with him to just put it down. I then stated that if he put the bottle down that I would drop the matter and let them all go home with no problems. But he wouldn't listen. He just stood there. I asked him again to put the bottle down, but he wouldn't listen. So then I told him that I was going to put my gun down if he put his bottle down. This seemed to intrigue him because as I was putting my gun away, he started to lower his bottle. So we both lowered what was in my hand. Okay, so if you both lowered your weapon, then please explain to me how Joseph Stevens ended up shot by your gun. My gun was almost in my holster until I realized that the young man wasn't dropping his hand. He wasn't putting the bottle down. Instead, he held the bottle even tighter and began running at me and screaming at me. I heard him saying, I'm tired of the police. The police don't run our streets. After seeing him run towards you, what did you do? I panicked. I was for sure he was coming to attack me to take my life. So I grabbed my weapon pointed hand. hand and fire. It happened so quickly. And when the smoke cleared and the panic ceased, I realized it wasn't the boy with the bottle in his hand lying on the ground. Said it was the quiet kid. It was so nice. It was Joseph Stevens. How did you manage to shoot Joseph Stevens? Sir, it all happened so fast. And all I can remember is this young man with the bottle running towards me. I did not 
see Joseph Stevens step in the way. I didn't realize that he was trying to push his friend back and stop his friend from attacking me. Sir, I am a good cop, a celebrated officer who never misses the day of work. I loved serving and protecting the people of this city. It was my duty and served proudly. And now all of that means nothing. All of that is thrown in the garbage because of this one moment. I didn't mean to kill that boy. I didn't mean to kill anybody. I was just trying to defuse the situation. I was just trying to do my job. I just wanted to be a good officer. Just like Virgil Tibbs. Joseph Stevens was a good kid. The kind of kid that I have always tried to protect from the dangers of this world. He was trying to save my life. And I took his. I killed him. And I feel terrible, sir. I made a mistake. Stupid mistake. And I have to live with that for the rest of my life. But does that make me a bad cop? Does it, sir? Does it? What up, bro? <clears throat> I just... I just wanted to come and all. Um, Jojo, I really, I really don't know what to say, um, or even how to say it. I just, I just, um, so sorry, man. I, Jojo, I, I'm just so sorry, man, bro. You remember that time we were in ninth grade and the school took us hiking? <laughs> Man, I remember thinking, this is so lame. I mean, just think about it. Here we are, two black boys from the hood going hiking in the middle of, of nowhere. <laughs> I was convinced Bigfoot was gonna jump out at any moment and swallow us whole. All I could hear you saying was, T, we're gonna be good, man. Give it a try. Chill out. I wasn't convinced at first. I guess I was nervous or something, but once we hit the top of the mountain, and you can see that view. Man. I had never seen that before. You know, the sky was so clear up there. 
and you can see mountains for miles and miles and I after seeing that view I was so glad I listened I was glad you made me go it would just be something I will always remember not only because of the view but because it was me and it was me and you. You know, it's always been me and you since the first grade. Think as thieves, just me and you. And now you're gone. And it's my fault, Joe. It's my fault, Joe. Joe. It's my parents. Parents, baby. Miss Stevens, he told me to calm down. He told me, but why didn't I listen? Why didn't I just put the bottle down, Miss Stevens? All right, slow down. It's, it's okay. It's going to be all right. But you have got to stop blaming yourself. It wasn't your fault. Yes, Miss Stevens, I killed Tojo. What? Okay, you talking crazy now. You did not kill Joseph. That officer did. No, Miss Stevens, it was me. The officer shot, but I was the cause. What? Now that don't make no sense. How could you be the cause? We were just, <clears throat> we were just chilling, you know, having a few drinks, not a lot, just a few beers. Then from nowhere, this officer comes up, shining his light in our face saying we're, we're too loud and that we need to be quiet because the neighbors are complaining. I was so mad at that dumb police officer because we were just sitting there and the police always have something to say, always. It's always like that, Miss Stevens. The police pounding on us, telling us we need to leave or we just, or we just need to stop us for no reason. Miss Stevens, do you know how many times Joseph and I were stopped by the police? Six. Six times this year. I remember this one time. We were visiting my Aunt Nora. You know, she, she lives in a, in a beautiful complex, in, in a nice neighborhood. And just as we were leaving, an officer pulled up, got out of his car, walked over, shining his light in our face. Then proceeds to ask us, what are y'all boys doing in this neighborhood? As if we don't belong. He just judged us. He didn't even know or care if we lived in this neighborhood. All he saw was two young black boys walking down the street. He didn't even ask our names. He just told us to leave. How can they do us like that? How can they treat us like we don't even matter? Sometimes, Miss Stephen, I just, I feel like a target. So yeah, so yeah, I picked up a bottle to take some action. And I, and, and Joseph 
<laughs> he stepped in the way. He stepped in the way to stop me. Hey, Miss Peoples, I'm so sorry. 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 <laughs> Parents, baby, of course I forgive you. Sometimes in life we do things that we're not proud of, that we wish we could take back. That's called regret. Regret is a dangerous thing because it can cripple you stop you from moving forward. Oh, but baby, you've got to let go of that guilt. It was a mistake. Just that, a mistake. Mistakes can be rectified, but we've got to do the work to try to do better. You took the first step by apologizing. Now you're gonna have to do something that's even harder. Forgive yourself. Cow. Just take it one day at a time. That's all you can do, baby. You know. Sometimes in life we walk by candlelight and it's hard to see the full picture. But once you get closer, more of that picture is revealed just one day at a time. I think about it every day. I do too, honey. I do too. Oh. Joseph was your best friend. You'll always remember him. You need those memories. Hold on to him. course. Now, you promised me one thing. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> you promised me that you'll never put your life in that type of danger again, because I don't want your mama to have to come and visit you here. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. I, I promise. Good. Now, you go home and you give your mama a big hug. Yes, ma'am. Miss Lee, we're gonna make you proud. I hope you boys. I hope you do.